Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. Bigger than I am. All right. Talking about prop governors, we left off yesterday with the purpose. An RPM sensing device which responds to a change in engine RPM by detecting oil pressure or by directing oil pressure to and from the prop. Um, constant speed prop holds the engine at a constant RPM. RPM. Therefore, the blade angle is continuously changing. Okay. And the RPM will be constant regardless of aircraft speed or throttle changes to a point. All right, that was, that was point one. Point two, basic components. Basic components. Well, within the pump, within the governor, we have a, a booster gear pump. Booster gear pump. What kind of pump is that? Constant displacement gear driven pump. So, governor. Is it a vein? Uh, it is a gear pump. Gears. Like an oil, oil pump. pump. Oh, okay. Like an oil pump because it, it is, an oil, is pump. an oil pump. So, uh, governor takes engine oil and boosts the pressure. And boosts the pressure. Um, it depends on what engine. So I'll just say about 150. I think it goes up to about 350 psi or more. Um, oops, booster gear pump. That would be an I actually. I. 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 You're right. All right. Pumps constant displacement gear pump. The pump is a constant displacement. Uh, gear type pump. It is directly, I want to say, directly connected to the engine. Ah, that's good enough. To the engine. Oh, yeah. No, driven gears. Be specific. <clears throat> now, it's critical that it is trying to think of something that's not directly RPM related. Everything on the engine obviously is driven off the gears, which means that it's tied directly to the engine RPM. If the engine speeds up, so does the accessory. Just like, you know, engine speeds up, so does the mag. Good thing, because they got to work together. Same thing with the, with the governor. Uh, it may be the governor. Uh, may be <clears throat> accessory. Case mounted or crankcase mounted. Which is to say it could be on the front of the engine, right by the prop, or it could be in the back of the engine. If I had my my way, my preference. I would absolutely want it mounted near the front of the engine on the case. Lycoming has a lot of them that are driven off the back of the engine, which means the oil pressure comes out of the accessory case. It goes directly into the governor. And because the transfer collar is the front main bearing, you got to get the oil from the governor all the way up to the front of the engine. And they did it with external lines. And sometimes those lines break. So they had an airworthiness directive on them. So you can imagine that a pump that's capable of taking the oil at 50, 60 PSI, boosting it up to a couple hundred, how fast that'll empty out a crankcase. Mm -hmm. So when that line breaks, you're going to lose all your oil very quick. And so at that point, you better hope you have some slick 50 in that engine. What, what, what they, what, I don't even watch TV. What are they? My, when I was a kid, it was like STP or slick 50. It was the stuff you poured in there, and it was it had like Teflon, 
Yeah, well, we run this engine without oil. <laughs> they don't have that anymore? No. There are the... Okay. I remember it, yeah. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I remember voting for Alexander Hamilton, too. <laughs> <laughs> You had to have a rock, and you had to like chisel in what you wanted. <laughs> Speaking of oil, it's way off topic, but it's relevant, not to this subject. Remember we talked about oil, we talked about additives for oil, about how some of it was just like, you know, it was proven to be just like a lighter weight oil, some of it marketed, and it was all this marketing. But, you know, one thing has been consistent, you know, I've, I always hear... And a lot of the old mechanics, they still swear by Marvel Mystery Oil. So some people will put it in their fuel tank, which I would never recommend because that's going to mess with your octane. And you're the one that had the Marvel Mystery Oil on your plane, right? I, I have some. So, I've, oh, you know, and I know that, and I've done just a little bit of reading on it. It is a solvent. Now, it might be just transmission fluid. It kind of looks like it. But it is a solvent. It is supposed to clear up the varnish that happens, you know, the coking and stuff. So my wife's Nissan, when you start it up in the morning, it's like got at least one lifter that's not even there. I mean, it's just, it's so loud. You have to drive so careful. And so I finally got fed up with the place where I was taking to get the oil changed on. Change it myself, right? And I got like Valvoline, high mileage stuff. You know, I just like, well, what is in it? What, you know? But then thought I'm just gonna put a little marble mist oil in it just to see if it clears up that lifter and she came out the other day she goes hey you remember my car used to make that noise all the time she goes it hasn't done it since you changed the oil <laughs> yeah and I asked her the other day she's got like almost 3,000 miles I'm like it's just still she goes it's it sounds like it's never ran so smooth before I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a total mystery so letter B, this segment has been brought to you by Marvel Mr. Oil. <laughs> now, pressure relief valve. All right, because we have a constant displacement pump that's taking, taking oil. That's my phone. I don't want to talk about it. Um, it's taking oil and it's pumping it through the gears. You can't turn that on and off, right? It's always pumping it. But yet we now know that if we send oil to the prop, it's gonna do one thing, and if we drain oil off the prop, it does something else. So you're either sending it to the prop, or you're taking the oil and just saying, just go away, and letting the oil from the prop drain back into the crankcase. So at some point, we've gotta have the oil, as we saw, circulating just around the gears, and that's where the pressure relief valve comes in. And one of the reasons why we have it, all right. Also to prevent too much pressure, because if we get too much pressure going to the prop, we're going to start blowing out seals and doing things that we don't want to do. So, uh, dynamic disassembly. The, the hub, hub the part. Yes. Hard light. Well, you can't put a light on it because it would take too long of a wire to wrap up around yeah, the prop. Right. So, uh, too much pressure. A pressure relief valve. The valve allows excessive pressure to be returned to the inlet side of the pump. <laughs> nope. Yes, it is absolutely the inlet side of the pump. Okay. That is how it is routed. Okay. But the, the oil from the prop is back to the pump. Yes, but that's out. That's on another system. That's, that's a different system. It's not. Well, it's, Same it's system, that. but different area. Different channel. There we go, different channel. All right, you guys here, um, Lawrence and Zach run their governor. No, got hot, didn't it? Got a little toasty. Yeah, and how long did we say run it? Two minutes? Three minutes? I don't think we had to even run it a minute by that point. Yeah, and I shut it down. I'm like, feel how hot that is, and he wouldn't put his hand on it. He was scared. Sex not pretty. I don't know. You should have seen the look on his face when I started it up and started making noise. He just froze. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had to turn it off. I'm like, okay, it's all right, buddy. I mean, they told me to shove my hand into an engine and it said it wouldn't be hot. So. <laughs> and then, we, then the guy that did it burned his hands. So. All right, parts, 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 parts. Pressure relief valve and kind of the brains of the operation here, the flyweights. All right, so flyweights are connected to the drive shaft of the governor. Some governors are going to turn clockwise and some are going to turn counterclockwise. How do we determine which way it turns? I feel a new coffee cup coming on. It was the A and B. There's, there's a, the holes are the A and B, and when you plug, you can either plug both B holes and then roll through the A and A. Okay, that's how you change direction. So if I said it turns clockwise, which which how do you, which way is that? If you're asking for the drive end. Yeah, the direction of rotation is what viewed from the drive end. Also, I mean, keep in mind that late. sometimes they have adapters built on them that change the direction. That's not the drive end. So if you have an if you have something with an adapter on it that should have came off that changes direction, well, got to count that. Just a heads up. Direction of rotation is when viewed from the drive end. Drive end. How do you change direction? I thought that was what you asked. A and B holes in some of them. I thought you asked. Yeah. yeah. How do you determine which direction it's rotating? All right. How do you see? Yeah. Well, you didn't get marked off, so it's okay. So. <laughs> Flyweights, connected drive shaft to governor. They are L-shaped. L-shaped. As the gov... Do you want me to write all this? Yes. Okay. As... you the only one? I'll just give my notes. As the governor... Speeds up. Governor speeds up. Centrifugal force moves the flyweights outward, uh, which lifts the pilot valve. As the governor speeds up, centrifugal force uh, moves the flyweights out. <laughs> flyweights out, so it'd be like that. Moves them out, which lifts the pilot valve. Which lifts the pilot valve. All right, let me see. As governor slows down. Loss of centrifugal force moves the flyweights in. Which would be this way. And lowering the pilot valve. Lowering the pilot valve. And five, if the governor is on speed, is on speed, the flyweights are in equilibrium. What do I mean by equilibrium? Balanced against what? The speeder spring. There you go, because I haven't mentioned the speeder spring, but it's against the speeder spring. And of course, I would draw it like this with the speeder spring. There, speeder spring. Why'd you do that? 
All right, then we have the pilot valve. Moves up and down to one of three positions. So one opens passages, opens. from the pump to prop, or governor to prop. So that'd be one position. Uh, to position two opens passages from governor to, oops, that was, nope, I didn't want to write that. Where am I going with this? Open passages from, thank you, from prop. Uh, we'll call it to drain. Which is basically the crankcase. And three would be blocks all passages. All right, so notice I'm not being specific, like, on speed, under speed, over speed, what it does. Because it's going to change depending on if it's a twin or a single, feather, non feather. But those are the three positions. Except for, on Except for what? On speed. Huh? On speed is all blocks, blocks all passages. passages. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's on speed. No matter what, that's on speed. I don't think it's really ever on on speed. I don't really think that's. It's just I mean, it is. Going back and forth. Yeah, it's constantly going Speaking. back and forth. Yep, it can't really be. A, it just physically can't because you're going to lose oil through the oil, through the oil passages. It's going to uh, shred the collar ring. Plus, the air is not that smooth. Plus, it's just. Yeah, once I put in my digital tack, I was. I almost don't like it because it moves so much. I mean, like, <laughs> And it's so, uh, the whole thing is, you know, before when I set my, my prop, so what I did, I told you I got the handheld tack checker, right? And checked it against fluorescent lights and I got it just right. So then I, and then I took it out, did a ground run up. It was a little fast. So adjust the stop screw on the governor and then, uh, then took it up for a flight, right? And so straight and level flight, I would see that, you know, 2400 is red line, I got like 24. 10. I'm like, oh man, it's off by 10 over speed, you know, come back, land a little bit more on the screw, take it up, you know, and, and I had it, according to that, just perfect. And, you know, I used it all the way to, to Boston. I would, you know, set it up there because I had nothing better to do. I'm like, ah, let's see what the prop's doing, you know, and like, oh man, look at that, you know, it's just perfect, you know. And then when I would take off, I do the same thing because number one, the, my um, RPM was kind of low and I know it was reading high, so I can't go and lean over, look like that. So I'm like, I just put it here. That's kind of cool. I can see it right there. You know, take off, full power. I'm like, 2,400. I mean, it's perfect. You know, now my new JPI, you know, it's flashing red at me. 24, you know, it's a little over 24. And then, then sometimes you go, 2,410. I'm like, oh, geez, 2,410. Then you stop and think about it. Man, that's 2,400 RPM. And for every minute, it'll get an extra 10. It's really, <laughs> you know. But still, I mean, they're fussing with the little screw. Michael was like, oh, I got to stop and adjust the little screw, you know. Is that considered an over speed? No. It, it's, I know. Then I flew it again. Then it was like the most RPM I get out of it was like 2380. Ah, oh, it's 22 low. What am I going to do? You know, it's like, calm down. So, with a constant speed, how much of an RPM range will it, will you notice with that digital gauge um, as the, the governor's like tracking back and forth? Um, about 10 or 20. Yeah. Much. That's pretty close. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know what a grasshopper would be doing at 10,000 feet, but okay. It's got hops. I don't know. 
Uh, let's see. This shouldn't be this way. This should be more like there. Oil route. Oil route. <laughs> so an accessory case mounted governor uses an external line to the front of the crankcase. So an accessory pad mounted governor uh, uses an external external oil line to the front of the crankcase. Which I already mentioned. The, the crankcase mounted <clears throat> governor. Can I just say gov? Yeah, save time. Has no external lines. You've got one port drilled into the crankcase. It is right off the oil gallery that feeds directly into the governor. Governor boosts it up. There's another oil line uh, with a screen on it. Goes through a gasket with a screen right back into the to the crankcase directly to the transfer collar. Transfer collar to the middle of the crankshaft through the bore of the crankshaft out into the piston of the propeller. Now mind you, mostly I'm talking here about horizontally opposed modern engines, not necessarily uh, radial engines. So oil is directed through the case to a passage in the front main bearing. Oil is directed. Directed uh, through the case, through the case to a passage in the front main bearing. Um, Passage in the front main bearing. An oil hole in the crank. Lines with the, uh, let's see with the passage in the front main bearing. Oil is then, we see, transferred through the crankshaft. through the crank, uh, out the front, to the prop. Both Continental and Lycoming have service instructions, bulletins, on how to convert an engine from a fixed pitch to a constant speed. We talked about this in the last class. Basically, with a fixed pitch, you have a plug in the front of the crankshaft. You got an opening in the back because those oil passages are still there. So oil goes in, it does go into the front of the crankshaft, and it leaks out the back back into the crankcase. It's not part of the oil pressure system because it's already been through the bearings and now it just can leak in there. Um, that causes a problem in that you have a centrifuge with oil in it, which then separates the oil and the sludge. And so you get sludge packed in around the inside of that, the crankshaft, right? We talked about that. Mm -hmm. And that sludge traps water and moisture against the metal, which causes corrosion, which caused a few crankshafts to, uh, have a, to crack and break off because the corrosion went through. So 
Remember the fix for that? So, nope, you had to go in and you have to, and this, this was Lycoming Service Bolt on everything over, Service Bolt, the AD was everything over 160 horsepower or more, but the Service Bolt then covered all the engines. So you went in, you scraped out all the sludge and you completely cleaned it out and you had to inspect it. And if you had any pits, you had to have them machined out, which means you had to take the crank out to do that. And then you put the urethra bond in there. Remember it to the joke? Mm -hmm. So, you guys remember the, yes. it just so happens you put the urethra bond in there and then you stamp PID on the outside. Then you put an STD 121 on plug on that. So, it's kind of a whole genital thing. So. <laughs> Do so I have to explain all the jokes to you? Okay, <laughs> urethra is the thing that you pee out. <laughs> PID, which stands for plated inside diameter. PID is also shorthand in the medical industry for pelvic inflammatory disease, which is which means this, the lady business got all messed up. And then an STD is a sexually transmitted disease. But see, see how it goes. Okay, so. Well, after and, and you sorry if you're watching on <laughs> So I don't know. Somebody made all that up. I don't know. Um, okay, so if you're going to convert then from a fixed pitch to a constant speed, you pull the plug out the front, but you got to put the plug in the back. Yep. Which you can do down the bore. So, um, which is a, a pipe plug, and you can go in there and plug that because otherwise the oil pressure is going to come into the bore of the crankshaft. And it's not gonna well, it's not gonna pressurize anything. It's just gonna leak out the back still, and your prop won't work. Well, every now and then you do it all correctly, and you get it all working and running, and everything's fine. But long periods of time go by, and suddenly your prop doesn't work so well. It's starting to get real sluggish. Well, they're still getting that sludge build up in the front of that crankshaft, and before you know it, you start closing it off. So you gotta pull the prop off and clear. I've never had to do that. That's Seems to me like that'd be pretty damn bad. It's like, how long would you have to have a prop on without doing that? But every time I pulled a prop off, I would get in there and clean the sludge out. Just part of the. Um, so, speaking of that, when you take a prop off, the one tool that you never want to forget five gallon bucket. Because <coughs> when you're working on constant speed props, that whole front Eight. nose is full of oil and the dome in front of the propeller is full of oil. And so you get all the bolt and the props are heavy. You know, and, and you usually can't do a constant speed by yourself, so you got to go get some, I'm ready, you know, and they're standing there holding the prop, and you're getting the last few bolts. Okay, ready? You kind of both work, and you walk it off. It's like, oh, good Lord, it's making a mess all over the floor because you forgot a bucket. Now you're standing there holding the prop going, what do you do with the prop? <laughs> okay, so you need a five-gallon bucket. You put the five-gallon bucket under there. When you pull it off, the oil goes from the prop and the crankshaft in the five-gallon bucket, and it doesn't take long before that it finishes draining out of the engine. Now you got the prop. Take the prop, turn it upside down, set it on top of the bucket, and it sits perfectly. And especially if it's a three blade, they bounce really nice in a five gallon bucket and they drain. And then you call the prop shop and they come get it. But if you forget a five gallon bucket, you'll be in trouble. And then, of course, because we're really good mechanics and we don't want to leave open holes on an engine, God forbid, because, you know, a pigeon will fly in there nowadays. We always take the rag out of our back pocket and we shove it into the crankshaft. Yep. Yes. And uh, one of the IA seminars I went to recently was they had some really good photos of what happens when you put the prop back on with the rag still in. Yeah, it goes into the prop and makes a huge mess. And, you know, now you got to send it out for, you know, uh, disassemble and reseal. Except when they did that, they found some, you know, found some corrosion. Got I always. I remember we built an airplane. And uh, just one of those things, you know, because we did this in my shop. We would take an airplane down to just, especially antique airplanes, they have a steel cage, like a bird cage, right? If that's all it would be, just a steel cage. We would send it off and have it uh, blasted, bring it back, paint it, and start building the whole plane up, and engine included. So there was nothing on the plane where we could go, oh, you know, we send it out, and those idiots, you know, everything was done in-house. And, man, we could not get this <coughs> stupid vacuum pump to work on this airplane. And uh, yeah, it's because the little red caps were still on the. <laughs> so you, you know, you gotta take the little red shipping caps off. So you put all the hoses on. It's like it just isn't sucking. How did he get his? <coughs> he screwed into the cap. Oh, 
or are you? There are caps that go inside. Oh, yeah. Like it has a yeah, but it has a little shoulder on it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The, sh the, the shoulders, the shoulders, the shoulders, the shoulders break off they're, they're, very easily. They break off and they're flexible. And if you push hard enough on a hose, yeah, yeah. probably yeah. had smoke in your eye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cigarette yeah. going. <laughs> Shouldn't say cigarette because right, right, worked by the boss man. He loved his cigars, man. Um, if you want to own a repair station, you have to smoke cigars. I've seen that. Halfway there. You smoke cigars? Yeah. But you don't inhale them in your lungs, right? Oh, God. I did yeah. once, and it was just terrible. Oh, God. Yeah, that was my first couple of times. Oh. <laughs> that was as attractive as mouth cancer is. I just haven't been able to pick it up. <laughs> Just take your teeth out and look at uh, that. Guys love that time. <laughs> where's where's Duncan? Duncan? Duncan. You'd have to back me up on this. Duncan drill guy. Duncan. He's in there. That's not Duncan. No. When you I know. It'll be a minute. I told you I drove ambulance in Sacramento. And when you first start driving ambulance and you're like the junior guy, you get put on these they call them code ones, which are scheduled transfers. And so I spent a couple years picking up people at the hospital, taking them to the cancer centers for radiation. You don't want to smoke the cigarettes. They're not good for you. All right. That was a soapbox. I'm sorry about that. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. Okay, the speeder spring. <laughs> Back on track. Somebody's got to keep me on track. The speeder spring. Must have had some coffee. Everything's just you know, too much thought. Hey, this, no, not applies. Now I'm going to start thinking about what I'm writing. A P P L. Yeah, that would be fine. A P P L. All right, applies. We can go with that. Apply spring pressure to the flyweights. Well, obviously, without the speeder spring, the flyweights are just going to be in what position at all times? Overspeed. Overspeed. Well, that's not going to do anybody any good. So that also answers the question, what happens if the speeder spring breaks? Overspeed. So without the spring pressure, without the spring pressure, the flyweights would move outward. Flyweights would move outward um, into overspeed. <coughs> and lift pilot valve. Even with the slightest of RPM. I mean, as soon as you start it, you idle it. It's going to be overspeed at idle. So. Uh, I did accidentally start an airplane once with the blue knob in the wrong spot. I mean, that was brand new. I think it was probably one of the first constant speeds I ever ran. It was, a, it was an Eagle crop duster. Things are huge. I mean, the wingspan is, I don't know. It, it fit in our hangar by that much. So it's a, it had a, it has a light coming you know, TIO 540, 540 or something. I remember and starting it up, man, the thing just ran like crap. It was horrible. I'm like, oh, this is not good. So I shut it down, got out, you know, asked the guy, the boss man, hey, man, that thing just sounds terrible. I don't even think he looked up. He goes, well, try pushing the prop knob back in. <laughs> 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 Who what? <laughs> you already knew. Yeah. Went out there. Yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> so, yeah, it was in overspeed. So that means I took the spring pressure off because all you're doing in a governor, pilot input, more spring pressure, less spring pressure. More spring pressure. That's all you're changing in there. So I had no spring pressure. So the speeder spring. Um, allows 
I can finish that story when we're not uh, on camera if you want. It's, <laughs> it gets worse. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> 10 minutes. Allows the flyweights to move. Let me see. The speeder spring. I don't even know what I'm writing. The speeder spring allows the flyweights to move um, outward at the proper RPM. Get now. Speeder spring. Allow, I'm going to change that a little bit. The speeder spring. Heavy sigh. You want an eraser? I'll bring it. You can write it. The speeder spring allows the flyweights to move outward at the proper RPM and gives pilot control. You want me just to go with that? Yes. Okay. The speeder spring uh, allows. Allows the flyweights. Yeah, I'm writing the same thing I was writing, because well, the heavy, the heavy yes. sigh. Oscar said I, yes. I've been paid. I can't erase this. That's, your That's why you're like Vin and have flyweights. Yeah, outward. Vin is out of freaking line. I'll pass. That's totally good. That's the proper. Let me say at the proper RPM. It gives pilot control. Gives pilot control. Cockpit controls. Are attached to the speeder spring. Attach to the speeder spring and vary the spring tension. So more tension, more tension will equal higher or higher or uh, higher or lower RPM. More tension would push the spring. Higher speed, down. so it'd be under speed. So under speed, more, uh -huh. which will decrease, decrease the uh, drop and increase. On what kind of no, it's going to be the same, no matter what. Under speed, so more tension equals. We'll put that under speed. Under speed. Low blade angle. Which will increase. Which will increase or decrease pitch. Decrease. Decrease pitch. You want to give the engine more RPM so you less load. And increase RPM. Okay, think it through. Increase the speeder spring tension. So I'm flying along and I do this, I increase the tension of the speeder springs, which is going to drop the pilot valve, that's inconsequential right now, but I'm telling the governor that I, you're going too slow. Uh -huh. So the governor is going to say, well, if I'm going too slow, then to correct this, I need to speed up. I need to speed up to get it to equilibrium, and how's it going to speed it up? Decrease the flat, decrease, flatten it out. Yep. Increase the Proper, yeah. Yep. So two, so less tension. I, honestly, I want to say it's sometimes it's easier just to kind of do this. I, I don't have a problem. You're talking to me and you start doing this kind of stuff. So you get in your head, fine. Write on a piece of paper for the test. I don't mind. You do what you do to get the right answer. So less tension equals. So if I take less tension on the speeder spring, this flyweights are going to go out. Overspeed. So that's going to be overspeed, which will increase pitch. Pitch and decrease RPM. Now we can kind of back up a little bit and think about it. So right here, more tension under it, which will decrease pitch. Is that going to be pulling the knob out or pushing it forward? Pushing, pushing it forward. Yeah, yeah. Push it forward. All right, push it forward. More tension, under speed, decrease pitch, flat. Yeah. So when you say the word tension, 
I'm thinking. Oh, I know, I know. It should be compression. Or we could do that. More pressure. Compression. This isn't the only place where that's kind of come up, where springs. It's just kind of people talk about springs. Spring tension. I know, but yeah. But we should try to be right. Okay. We got that. That's a good place for a break.